Special announcement before the review, Ebs is back. That's right, the elusive, exclusive Book Society returns, and this time we're joined by Ira over at Sci-Fi Words of Wonder, and we're discussing the original girl boss, Gerald of Jory. This time the Ebs are on Secret Fire Books channel, and the book discussion drops this Monday. Links are in the description. We'll see you all there. Welcome to Pulp Mortem, the search for a lost literary classic from Pulp Era. I want to have an argument. Hi, darling. Ah, oh, hello, my love. I would like to request a fight. Very well, I accept. Splendid. Here are um, my arguments. Here are my arguments. And my rebuttal. And mine. I got the results right here. You won, as usual. Oh, I have a headache. The thing is, I knew the name Herman Woke when I got this on a book haul not too long ago. But I, his name wasn't on my spreadsheet. I double-checked all my vintage sci-fi paperbacks. I didn't have anything by him. I mean, it was, honestly, it was kind of driving me crazy. Where did I know this guy from? But here's the thing. Long before I started collecting vintage sci-fi paperbacks, I collected antique books in general. And I have uh, some of my collection here on this shelf right here, which you guys can't see. I was walking by it one day, and then Mr. Woke's classic, The Cane Mutiny, practically jumped out and destroyed my battleship. That's why I couldn't place his name. Herman Woke is not a science fiction writer. Naturally, suddenly, I was quite interested in this little book here. But first, a little more about the author. Herman Woke was an American author born May 27, 1915, and he died in 2019, just days before his 104th birthday. Despite growing up in poverty, Woke received his BA from Columbia University and went on to work in radio, specifically comedy programs. After Pearl Harbor was attacked, though, Woke enlisted in the Navy and served in the Pacific Theater, fought in five major battles, and eventually rose to the rank of lieutenant. During his off-duty hours, Woke would write, his first book, Aurora Dawn, was published in 1947 and was met with acclaim. During his service, he also met his wife, and after marrying her, along with his experiences during the war, Woke resolved to leave a legacy. He wanted his life work to mean something, so he didn't return to comedy, but rather continued to write historical fiction and nonfiction. His next book flopped, but his third novel, The Cane Mutiny, was a smash hit. It was awarded the Pulitzer Prize and went on to become a play and then a movie starring Humphrey Bogart. Even the movie was met with acclaim, receiving seven Oscar nominations. Woke went on to pen more than 20 novels and plays and received a plethora of medals and awards, four honorary degrees, and has been called the reclusive dean of American history novelists. Not too shabby for a poor Jewish boy from the Bronx. Which brings us to the Lomakome Papers. Too prophetic for comfort. That's how Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Herman Woke describes his harrowing tale of war and space, a work of fiction being swiftly overtaken by the stark reality of today's headlines. In the Lomakome Papers, the author of The Cane Mutiny and The Winds of War tells of an American astronaut who discovers, beneath the surface of the moon, a civilization whose method of warfare is almost too horrible to describe. This unique novel combines breathtaking adventure, fighting satire, in a cry of warning to the human race. The Lomakome Papers is a novella that was first published in the February 17th issue of Colliers in 1956. Then in 1968, the novella again appeared, this time in a midnight penthouse, which <laughs> I, won't, I won't show here. Sorry. That same year, Pocket Books published it in novel form for 75 cents. I own the 1974 edition. It is 113 pages and originally cost 95 cents. The cover is by Harry Bennett, and it's, it's pretty wild. I think I like it? <laughs> I'm not sure though, but it definitely makes you ask, what the heck is going on here? You can find any edition for around 6 or $7, um, but as for you little pervs, 
I don't know how much the penthouse costs, so stop asking. Fine. Fine. This book is uh, very different. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm kind of, it's a memorable thing to be sure, but I'm kind of struggling to categorize my thoughts on this. What I really liked about this, I can see people disliking. And while it's true that all art is subjective, this book might be subjective to the point of being polarizing. Um, so maybe more so than anything I've read thus far. So bear that in mind as I go through this review that your take on this may be vastly different than mine and we both might be right. All right, let's give this a try here. Bennett not only did the cover, but he also supplied numerous illustrations throughout. In fact, every three or four pages. These are so stylized that I know this is subjective, but I thought many of them were just gorgeous and discovering each one was a welcome surprise. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I thought this was the baby's room. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Okay, look at this. It looks like a novel, right? It looks looks like a novel. It's not a novel. 113 pages is really short, but that's including a lengthy preface by Woke and an author bio by Harry Harrison. Plus, the picture pages were inexplicably blank on the other side. Now, the reason I have this in the good section is because I believe that if this story in this format was any longer, then it wouldn't work at all. I think that you think that a certain something is not all that it could be, when in fact, it is all that it should be and more. Speaking of which, the format. I really love the format. This is presented as a space naval reports of a crashed moon shuttle and it's recovered paper logs full of gaps arranged out of order with a suggested unreliable narrator due to oxygen deprivation. One of my favorite books back in 2001 was Madhouse at the End of the Earth by Julian Sancton, and it tells the story of the ill-fated Antarctica expedition of the Belgica. What made Madhouse special to me was the fact that it was told solely from recovered crew logs. It's great, and I definitely recommend reading it. Thanks for the tip. In the case of the Lomacome papers, uh, there isn't much for story, but the story really wasn't the point. Which brings us to... Man, look at these segues and setups. I am on fire today. <laughs> the story wasn't the point. Uh, we start with a mystery and we are left with even more questions at the end. Woke was concerned about humanity and he says as much in his preface, which was written 12 years after the initial printing. He, like everyone else during this era, had witnessed the devastation of nuclear bombs during World War II. And as tensions rose during the subsequent Cold War, he felt like he had to say something because the next bombs that dropped may very well be the end of all of us. This book is satirical, biting and smart. I don't want to get too much into Mr. Woke's message here, but suffice it to say he was not a fan of the things he saw happening over in the Soviet Union. And he also sought to question the very purpose of war itself, which segues again. A substantial portion of this tiny book is dedicated to the book of Kuzutlaus. Zutla, Zutla, who's Sizula. Uh, essentially, this is a cross between Moses and Aristotle, and it describes the basic need for war and a potential substitute called the reasonable war. This is where the cold open will make sense. Well, it'll make sense to you guys. It won't make sense to all of my poor neighbors who walked by and saw that in my window. The Zutalawas highlights the fact that war is typically a net positive for the victors. You see, patriotism is at an all-time high, production is booming, the residents typically experience a surplus, population growth is slowed due to large numbers of young men dying, and the technological innovations war demands increase the subsequent quality of life. The only downside is the destruction of infrastructure, which is remedied in the reasonable war solution. You see, once war is declared, both sides will have an ample but unknown amount of time to prepare. Then, once time is called, both nations are audited by the College of Judges, 
Once every resource, innovation, and variable are accounted for, the college randomly runs the numbers and declares a winner. At that point, projected casualties are randomly drawn, and I won't, I won't go into what happens next. However, you could probably guess it. <laughs> Halfway through reading this, I realized that this was A Taste of Armageddon from Star Trek. The exact same premise, except the outcome of wars was determined by a supercomputer instead of a college of judges in that case. It's an interesting what-if premise, and it's no wonder it is considered one of the best episodes of the original series. And joke's on you for thinking I could go an episode without talking about Star Trek. Death, destruction, disease, horror. That's what war is all about, Anon. That's what makes it a thing to be avoided. You've made it neat and painless. So neat and painless, you've had no reason to stop it. And now, the bad. There is no currency, no money, only hydrogen. The element is present in stars in the proton the proton chain, essentially giving life to the universe. It is also in nearly every living molecule. To the Lomacomians, the only true value is hydrogen. Therefore, each citizen is given a hydrogen score based upon their, what their profession contributes to society as a whole. Now, this is clearly a very thinly veiled satire of communism. Now, I put this in the bad section, not because I love communism. I'm not, in truth, I'm not the biggest fan of it. However, it's in the bad section because of how heavy handed this was. At least I think. I mean, I give Woke some credit. I gave him some grace because one, he didn't do science fiction. And two, I wasn't alive during this era and during this time. I don't know. Maybe his tone was was appropriate. Maybe that's how hard it needed to be hit. I don't I don't know. Maybe it was necessary the way it was handled. Not sure. Your mileage on this may vary, but I mean, for me, when satire drifts into preaching, no matter the sermon, I think I'm out. Hard science purists, steer clear. <laughs> Woke warns in his preface that he purposefully dodges science and realism here. Normally this is fine. I mean, come on, it's 1956. They were going to get some things wrong about space travel, science, moon landings, things like that. I mean, be honest with yourselves. You think in 70 years from now, everything we believe is still gonna hold up? I doubt it. However, I can see his attitude coming across as aloof, almost like he's better than writing science fiction. He even went out of his way to clarify that the one science fiction book that inspired him to write this, that he read it by chance, almost by accident. Now, I don't know if he actually views sci-fi as below him, um, however, I can understand someone taking it that way. Either way, I don't think somebody would be wrong in saying to him, listen, Mr. Woke, you're you're an amazing, you're a fantastic writer, and there shouldn't be any gatekeepers to genre, to any genre. Like, if you want to play, let's play ball. That's, that's great. The more the merrier. All are welcome. We only ask that you respect the game. Respect the game. Oh, my God. Back told a teeny tiny lie. Breathtaking adventure. In a word, no. There was some drama at the end and some action, but it was cut short due to gaps in the logs and it's unclear what actually happened. I'm actually okay with that. I actually really liked it, so I'm not complaining, but don't say breathtaking adventure when 50% of this book is somebody copying pages from an alien Leviticus. Liar! For being a former comedy personality, there's not much for humor in here. The satire is there clearly, but for fun and humor, not much is there, um, except for <laughs> except for some of these interior pictures. Now, most of these were very beautiful, but some of <laughs> some of them. <laughs> So what's the verdict? Ebook, three out of five. This is not a novel or even a typical science fiction story. It's an essay, cleverly disguised as a novella. That being said, the story makes you think, and the further I am removed from reading it, the more I find myself thinking about it. Woke is good, and I think it should be read, but I have a hard time judging it as a novel, which is why it didn't rank any higher. If you see this somewhere for a couple bucks, I'd say buy it. I had just finished reading a massive novel, and afterwards, this was the perfect digesti. And that is my review of the Lomacome Papers. Have you read Herman Woke's lone science fiction offering? If so, 
I am very interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. And as for the next book, I polled you all on what I should read next. It was close. It was really, really close. But sorry, Wasp. The winner is The High Crusade. What is it, darling? What is it, time? Yes? Hello, my love. What is it, darling?